welcome to Choosing Plants. My name is Heather and this is a channel where I complete different 30-day vegan challenges to see if I can find a lifestyle that is basically super good for helping to maintain um, a healthy body weight but also something that's actually doable, something you can actually maintain um, and be sustainable. Um, so things that I look at are whether whether you get enough to eat, whether or not it's the types of food that I might enjoy, whether or not um, something is actually, like I said, sustainable. So anyways, this 30 days is going to be focused on something called um, microbiota accessible carbohydrates. So basically, um, there is a, a couple, Justin and Erica Sonnenberg, that work, I believe, at Stanford. And I heard them do a presentation with, um, this was back in... I don't know, four or five months ago with the Food Revolution Summit, where basically they were talking about what they call Big Macs, which is having a high, big, high microbiota accessible carbohydrates, which basically means a lot of fiber. But the thing that they were talking about is that it's got to be a diverse type of fiber. It can't just be, so one of the things that they had said was, so, you know, you can go and get some Metamucil at the store and have it twice a day, and you've now had a lot of fiber, but it's not necessarily, that's not really what the the gut needs because it's not a diverse amount of fiber. So the things that I'm going to be looking at this time um, are trying to get, so basically the average American diet has approximately 15 grams of fiber. The um, recommended amount for a daily intake is about 30. And if you go back and look at hunter-gatherer type societies, apparently they were eating like 150 grams of fiber a day. So that is a lot of fiber. Um, and I'm not actually sure if I'm going to be able to get it, but I'm thinking that I'm going to try to aim for 50 grams of fiber a day in from basically eating vegetables that are high in fiber, fruits that are high in fiber like berries, and also um, beans, legumes, that type of thing. So I am going to, on this 30 day challenge, not have things that are white, mostly white based. So no white rice, no white potatoes, no um, processed flours, that kind of thing. Flour, maybe if it's made out of chickpea, might be a little bit uh, more readily accessible and, and okay to do. I'll have to look at the amount of fiber that's in that. Um, so I have um, downloaded two books from um, Kindle Unlimited. One is called The Well-Fed Microbiome and the other one is called The Microbiome Diet and I've looked at recipes out of both of those. So that's going to be where I'm getting a lot of my recipes from. Um, but then also, I mean, you just find stuff that's high in fiber off of the internet. So you can find recipes that you find um, that might be attractive to you. So lots of fiber. One of the other things that they talk about is um, prebiotics versus probiotics. And then in the book, it actually, one of the books actually talks about symbiotics, which basically is you want to eat both pre and pro in order to make your gut as healthy as possible. So prebiotics, from what I understand, are the foods that you eat that the microbes eat that are in your gut. So you want to eat, um, I know for sure that they were talking about things like bananas and artichokes, and I'm sure there's a ton of prebiotics that are healthy for you to eat, but you want to eat those things that your gut will then eat that makes it healthy. And the probiotics, from what I understand, are basically, um, I believe that's just fiber that is good for you, but it doesn't it doesn't stick around. It passes through your um, intestinal tract. But the symbiotics, may, basically saying that you need a combination of the two, um, are what make it really, really healthy for you. So focusing on complex carbohydrates, so not any of the simple sugars, like, the, like I said, the white rice, the potatoes, that kind of thing, the white potatoes, that type of thing. Um, and then the other thing that Erica and Justin, I mean, they have a lot of different things that they talk about. Um, everything from like, you don't need your house and your environment to be like completely sterile, like we think we need to nowadays. Um, that's not necessarily healthy for you. A little bit of germs here and there are not going to hurt you any. Um, and then also fermented foods. Apparently fermented foods are like super, super, super good for your gut microbes. They really like to eat that. Um, keeps them super healthy. So when I was looking up fermented foods, um, yogurt comes up on the list, which is, that's fine. I'm not a huge yogurt fan. I'm not really a big fan of any of the things that are fermented, to be honest with you. So kombucha is an option. I really don't like that. So that's not going to be happening. Um, 
I know that they make different types of kefir, so I'm, I'm not going to go back to having dairy kefir, but I'm, I know that they make water kefir, and I know that they make different types of kefir, so I'm going to look into that. Um, it says specifically that if you're going to eat fermented foods, it'd be like kimchi, or have miso in something, or have, um, it needs to be like sauerkraut or pickles that aren't, um, I don't think they, I think they're not supposed to have vinegar. So I've not actually seen sauerkraut that's not in vinegar, I don't think, but um, I'm gonna be looking in the refrigerator section of the grocery store to see what I can find. So those will be things that every single day I will try to include a, um, a fermented food. I'm going to have as much diversity in terms of eating fruits and vegetables and legumes that are high in fiber. And this isn't maybe the most different diet from I'm making muffins for my kids for breakfast. This isn't maybe the most different diet from things that I've done before, but <clears throat> their fermented foods are totally different. And basically I'm just looking to see, um, this last challenge that I did, um, my intestinal tract had slowed down significantly, so I don't think I was getting anywhere near enough fiber. So I'm hoping that this will actually get things moving again and probably put my um, intestinal tract back into a good shape. Um, but yeah, that's it for me for now. I am really actually quite excited about this one. Um, I, like I said, I'm, I'm not a big fan of fermented foods, so that might be a little bit of a challenge for me, but I mean, you could do anything for 30 days. <laughs> so we'll see if I can find some um, kefir that's an option um, and doesn't maybe taste too terribly and just not so exciting. Um, and then also, um, what else do I need to go and get? I need to look for sauerkraut and I need to look, which I, I don't like either, so that'll be interesting too. And yeah. We're gonna do a lot of beans and legumes and all sorts of things this time around. Need to go pull the muffins out of, made some banana chocolate chip muffins for the boys uh, for breakfast this morning. Vegan, of course. But anyways, that's it for me for now, guys. I hope that you are having a fabulous time and I will um, let me know if you guys have tried something like this before and you've uh, had some fermented foods that you found that you really, really like. Let me know what recipe that would be. And I hope you have a good one. Let's talk to you again tomorrow.